Hello, uh, my name is Brian Francia, and this semester we will be focusing on biochemistry. So, what exactly is biochemistry? Biochemistry is actually the study, the study of, you guessed it, cells. Okay, so it's the study of cells, and essentially you're figuring out what makes a cell and how it operates, you know, what kind of enzymes it uses, how do they make these complex amino acids, how do they interact with your body, how do you breathe, how do you perspire, right? So that's biochemistry. And it's very important because biochemistry allows us to figure out what we can do about AIDS or HIV or sickle cell anemia, right? So if we study biochemistry, we can actually find, you know, solutions to these problems. For instance, PrEP, which is a uh, medication to combat, um, you know, STDs or specifically, uh, specifically, you know, like HIV. So PrEP was created to combat HIV within patients, and that was um, created using biochemistry. So you can see how important it is to our daily lives. So I implore you to join me on this journey that we're going to take with biochemistry. So you and I are, are both going to cry. And that's fine. You know, if you feel like crying, you can do that. Now, before we start, I should let you know that I am not affiliated with the TA or the professor. I'm doing this on my own accord, on my own time, and I don't make any money off of this, okay? I just do it for the benefit of myself and for you, because you, as a student, come first in my studying, okay? I care about you, and I hope that you learn. I will do my best to give out uh, proper information and as honest as possible. If I don't know something, I'll do my best to explain it and uh, understand it more. So thank you for taking your time to watch this video, and let's get right into the uh, lecture. So this lecture is going to focus on the cell first, right? Because if you're going to introduce the concept, you're going to do the basic foundations. So I will be introducing parts of the cell, and we will carry on from there. So for our next part of the lecture, we're going to be focusing on eukaryotic cells. Now, a eukaryotic cell is a cell that has a lot of organelles or little tiny factories that I like to call them um, in the cell. Okay, so for instance, it has a Golgi complex, the nucleus, the mitochondrion, etc. Now, notice that when I teach this lecture, I'm going to be simplifying a lot of terms because I don't want to confuse you. Okay, that's not my job. My job is to kind of clarify things. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to hold your hand but I'm gonna treat you like a college student because you're amazing and you know you should be treated with respect. So here we are with the eukaryotic cell. Now the eukaryotic cell, the uh, diameter of the cell, so essentially um, the distance from this portion to this portion, the widest portion, is usually about 10 to 100 uh, micrometers, okay? Or Nan nanometers, sorry. So nanometers for eukaryotic cells. Now this is about 10 times uh, larger than prokaryotic cell. Now it's larger because it has to have so many things inside of it. It has to fit in the nuclear envelope, the vesicles, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, etc. And prokaryotic cells, they don't really need that. So they're a lot smaller than your eukaryotic cells, okay? Now eukaryotic cells are found in plants, animals, protozoas, etc. If you look inside your body right now, you're going to find at least one eukaryotic cell. I would hope so. <laughs> so yeah, these are about uh, 10 to 100 micrometer, uh, nanometers in diameter. So we will first uh, talk about the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane. So what is a plasma membrane? It is essentially a uh, skin or membrane, obviously, that is a chemical barrier to the outside world. So you're not gonna have any like carbon dioxide enter the cell at will because of this uh, plasma membrane. And the plasma membrane is actually made of lipids and proteins. So we will get into what proteins are made of later and what lipids are made of later, but you should know that the plasma membrane is made from fats, which are lipids, and of course proteins, right? So it's uh, not that simple, but 
That's what the plasma membrane is made from. So remember, lipids and proteins make up the plasma membrane, and the plasma membrane is a chemical barrier. Now, within a eukaryotic cell, there is something called compartmentalization. So there are tiny compartments within the cell. What does that mean? So it means that there are specific um, locations, for instance, the Golgi, Golgi complex, that does a specific operation, right? So compartmentalization is very important within our bodies because if we had no compartmentalization, we would just have one cell that does one thing. That's not very efficient, it's not good. So within each compartment, aka organelle, there are different functions, there are different enzymes that do different things at the same time. And that's very important because, you know, it allows the biological process to be carried out efficiently, right? So you have something that transports proteins, something that destroys proteins, doing it at the same time in the same cell, right? So it just cuts down on time and it makes the cell efficient. So compartmentalization, compart, I'm going to probably spell it wrong, compart, um, Mentalization. Well, I can barely fit it. Compartmentalization is uh, unique to the eukaryotic cells. It is uh, unique and very important. And the most important thing you need to know about compartmentalization is that it allows the biological separation. So biological biological process uh, separation uh, right before I forget to tell you um, specifically in animal cells like the cell of a dog or I don't know like a dolphin or something there will not be cell walls so in animals animals have no cell walls have no cell walls instead we have the plasma membrane okay but in plants plants do have cell walls so it's very it's very shocking right it's like ooh you know there's like a different um, cell within animals and plants. Animals don't have cell walls, they have plasma membranes. Plants, however, do have cell walls. Okay, so now we're going to go into the parts of the cell. So within the plasma membrane, you will find something that is very cool, I think, and that's called the cyto cytoplasm, aka uh, this can also be called cytosol. Okay, so if you see that on exam, uh, just think of cytoplasm. So what exactly is cytoplasm? So cytoplasm is a thick aqueous environment, okay? It's like jelly, jelly within the uh, plasma membrane. So that's what you see as blue right here. So that's the cytoplasm, okay? And it has concentrated protein, it has concentrated protein. So I'm gonna put conch, and that's concentrated uh, protein within the cytoplasm. Now, 20 to 30% of the cytoplasm is protein. So about uh, 20 to 30% of cytoplasm is protein, okay? So it's organized and it's a major site for cellular metabolism. So let's do it over here. So the cytoplasm is useful for cellular metabolism. And whenever you think of cellular metabolism, think of glycolysis. Uh, let's see, glycolysis, something like that, actually. See, uh, to go. There we go. That's how you spell it. Like glycolysis, and glycolysis is just you know breaking down glucose to make energy. So within the plasma membrane, you're going to have a cytoplasm, which is 20 to 30 percent protein, and it's useful for metabolic um, operations, right? So it's going to metabolize 
glucose into energy and some other operations, okay? So that's very important for you to know. Also, within the plasma membrane, specifically the cytoplasm, you're going to have the cytoskeleton, okay? So the cytoskeleton, okay? So that's in, in cytoplasm. And essentially, it's a 3D matrix made from protein fibers, okay? So it's a 3D shape, 3D, um, let's say shape made from proteins. So 20 to 30 percent of the cytoplasm is protein and those proteins make up the cytoskeleton. Now what does the, uh, the cytoskeleton do? Well it actually gives the cell its shape, right? So notice that this is kind of like an oval shape right here. So it's kind of like an oval shape and um, that shape is made from the cytoskeleton, okay? And the cytoskeleton allows the cell to move, allows uh, cells to move, have shape, and what else? What else? And it gives, uh, well, it guides internal organelle movement, okay? So now the little factories in here, like the Golgi complex, they can actually move with structure. They're not going to be like a bunch of splats and gloops inside the cell. They're actually going to have a shape to them, okay? Like the mitochondria is an oval shape, looks like a jelly bean. Well, that jelly bean shape is created by the cytoskeleton, okay? So it gives structure to organelles. I'm just going to put struct uh, to organelles. Okay, so as a recap, the cytoskeleton is found within the cytoplasm, which is 20 to 30 percent protein. Those proteins give the shape its cell, okay? Because of, well, its shape. Because the proteins make up the cytoplasm, sorry, the cytoskeleton, and the cytoskeleton provides shape to the cell and its organelles. It gives the shape to the mi mitochondria, to the nucleus, etc. Okay, so it's very important for uh, structure and rigidity. Now we will be talking about the nucleus. Okay, so the nucleus is the largest part of the cell. Okay, and what does the, the nucleus do? Well, the nucleus stores genetic information and makes most of the DNA and some RNA. So stores, stores um, genetic info and makes DNA and RNA. Uh, pretty obvious, right? Pretty obvious. It's also bound by a double membrane. So you, as you can see right here, this nucleus right here is bound by this guy right here and then a very very thin membrane over there okay so it has a double membrane for you know added protection and for some uh, osmosis or whatever so there's some uh, double membrane action now we will talk about the uh, endoplasmic reticulum now notice that there are actually two uh, ERs, okay, we're, we're just going to call endoplasmic, endoplasmic reticulum ER, okay, because it's a mouthful, I'm not really good at speaking. So there's smooth and there's also uh, the rough one, okay. So what's the difference between the smooth ER and the rough ER? Well, the smooth one actually makes lipids, okay, so that makes, makes lipids or fats, so it makes fats right there, lipids, and the rough one actually makes proteins makes proteins uh, via ribosomes, so via ribosomes, okay? We will talk about ribosomes later. So what exactly is the ER? Well, the ER is actually a network, so we're going to call this the ER, is actually a network of interconnected
interconnected, closed, membrane bound, vesicles. Okay, so you're probably saying, hey, you know, what's a vesicle? So a vesicle is just a structure that has cytoplasm and is closed off by fats, okay? That's what a vesicle is. But what exactly does it do? What, what is it? Well, a vesicle is just a little structure that transports materials. So if you consider the cell to be a factory or a warehouse, the vesicles are the little baby trucks, you know, the 18-wheelers that are packed with I don't know, fats or proteins or enzymes, and they move around the cell, transporting those enzymes to the nucleus or the mitochondrion or whatever. So those vesicles are like super duper important, okay, dude? They're like really important. So vesicles, again, are uh, structures that have cytoplasm and they're closed off by fats. Those vesicles are like little transport trucks that transport uh, materials, such as enzymes or proteins, to different parts of the cell. So, of course, the ER is attached directly to the cell and also to the nuclear membrane, okay? So uh, this little guy right here, I don't know if you can see that, it's like kind of like blue rectangles. They're attached to the cell, okay? And they're also attached to the nucleus um, membrane, okay? And its job is to make, change, and to transport cellular materials. So the ER makes materials it changes the materials depending on where it's going to go, and then it's going to transport those materials. Okay, so you can consider the ER to be like a warehouse where they make stuff, they're going to change the, the labels, change the structure, and then they're going to ship it out via vesicles, the little baby trucks, okay, all over the cell. So the ER is pretty darn important to the cell, okay? Going back to ribosomes, which is a key player into the ER, Ribosomes are made from RNA, and they're made from proteins, okay? But they're not bound by the membrane. So ER has ribosomes. Uh, let's do this in a different color. So ribosomes are, and the, well, they're made from RNA and protein. Okay, and they're not bound by membrane. Not bound by the membrane. They're actually bound to the ER. So whenever you see the ER, you can expect to see those little ribosomes. So right here, uh, you're gonna see these little dots. And they're a little kind of weird, but notice that those dots are actually present. They're present right here, okay? So they're found within the ER. And what the ribosome does is that it makes proteins. It does protein synthesis, okay? So it makes proteins. So we're gonna put over here, we're gonna put makes uh, proteins. So you kind of see like a paradox that the ribosome is made from proteins, but its job is to make proteins. It's kind of weird. So you can consider the ribosomes to be a worker within the ER factory warehouse. So the ER makes uh, proteins, well the ribosomes make the proteins, and the ER takes the proteins, ships it out uh, via vesicles, okay? So it's kind of like a duo. You have this team. One makes proteins, and then the ER takes those proteins and ships it out throughout the cell. We will now discuss lysosomes, right? So lysosomes, or lysomes, I uh, excuse me. Well, they're not shown on this diagram, unfortunately, but lysomes actually act kind of like a, a waste bin in a factory. Okay, so sometimes when you're making, I don't know, like uh, Cheetos, right? Sometimes you have a Cheeto that comes out purple or white or something, and that's defective. So what happens to that Cheeto? Well, you have a worker that takes it out the factory line and destroys it. They probably eat the Cheeto or something, but needless to say, that product is destroyed. Okay, so lysomes actually uh, destroy, destroy old or defective uh, cells, right, or products. So the in order to do this, it has to be very acidic. So the pH, the internal pH for this uh, organelle, would have to be about five. Okay, so the pH is about five. 
right? So the enzymes within the lysosomes actually degrade polymers, okay? So enzymes, enzymes break uh, polymers. Now, what is a polymer? A polymer is kind of like a collection of building blocks called monomers that form a, a compound, usually protein or DNA or something, right? So again, polymers are made from monomers. Monomers are the essential building blocks of a structure. Um, so the enzymes break out polymers and it just destroys it. It destroys the cells that make up the organelle, okay? So it's gonna destroy the polymers back into the building blocks called monomers. So makes polymers, into monomers. Okay. So, for instance, um, with monomers and polymers, well, let's get into it. So, to make a protein polymer, right, so protein is just a polymer, it's made from little chains called amino acids, okay, so a single amino acid, we're gonna call that AA, is just a monomer, it's just a building block. But whenever you link amino acids together, whenever you link monomers together, you're gonna get a polymer. So whenever you link amino acids together, etc., you're gonna get a protein, okay? And what lysome does is that whenever this protein gets too old, it's going to delete the bond between these things, right? So you go back from a polymer into the monomer. So again, a monomer is just an individual building block that makes a polymer, okay? So in this case, that would be a monomer. And this right here would be a polymer, okay? So a mono, and this is gonna be polo, or poly, right? So there you go. So a uh, polymer and monomer. Hopefully that explains it to you uh, using the example of protein. Now you can also do this with glucose, but the most simplest one that I can think of right now would have to be with proteins. And before I forget, lysomes are located in tiny little sacs filled with acids, right? So the acid is about 5 pH. So lysomes are individual sacs found within the cell. So now we're gonna be talking about the Golgi or Golgi, whatever, complex, okay? So the geo, the geo, what is that? Well, it's actually uh, flattened, flattened uh, vesicles, right? So vesicles, flattened vesicles of lipids, lipids, uh, proteins, and sugars, okay? So it's usually found near the smooth ER, notice that the smooth ER makes lipids, okay? And the nucleus, so near, near smooth ER, and nucleus, okay? So what does it do? What does the Golgi complex do? Well, it processes proteins and fats, okay? So it process proteins and fats, okay? And then it's also gonna distribute the cell materials to other organelles, why? Well, recall that a Golgi complex is essentially a whole fleet, a whole collection of vesicles. And what are vesicles? That's right, vesicles are like the little trucks in a factory that distribute materials, okay? So the Golgi complex is a whole collection of vesicles, a whole collection of 18-wheelers, uh, okay? So again, the Golgi complex is made from ves vesicles, which are made from lipids, proteins, and sugars, and they're near the smooth ER, because the smooth ER, again, makes the lipids. So they're gonna have to transport the fats, the lipids, to all over the cell. So they have to be near the smooth ER, and they have to be near the nucleus in order to distribute, you know, DNA or whatever it needs to distribute. Okay, so it processes the proteins and it processes the fats and distributes them around the cell. Okay. 
So finally, we will now be talking about the mitochondria, which is like the most famous, for some reason, part of the cell. Everybody knows it, right? So it's a powerhouse of the cell, haha, -ha, whatever. So the mitochondria, we're just gonna call it mito, okay? So the mitochondria is essentially, it, it has uh, the inner and outer membrane. has the inner and outer membrane, okay? And the mitochondria performs an oxidative energy production, okay? So it just makes energy. So Okay. So specifically what energy does it make? It actually makes ATP. And if you recall from basic biology, ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so it's kind of like the currency within the cell. Oh, we can't make this without, I don't know, like two ATPs. Where do we get our ATP? We get it from the mitochondria. I would like to transport this fat to the uh, X part of the cell. Well, you're gonna need one ATP to do it. Okay, so essentially it's going to kind of like provide energy to do the operations within the cell, okay? So the mitochondria is a tiny, tiny little baby, okay? So it's very tiny. But like normal babies, they're very important in our lives, okay? You just can't leave a baby unattended. You can't leave the mitochondria unattended, and you can't ignore it because it's so important within the cell. Without the mitochondria, nothing would get done uh, in the cell, okay? So it is so important that it has circular DNA. has circular DNA and it has its own genome. Okay, so there's like, um, probably misspelled that. So genome essentially has like a different DNA uh, compared to everybody else. Now, because it has like a different DNA compared to the whole entire cell, it's believed to have been a descendant from a bacteria, okay? So that is called the endosymbiotic uh, hypothesis, okay? So it's saying, oh, you know, the cell must have eaten uh, an organism, and that organism was compatible with the cell, and it decided to live there, and it decided to make ATP for the cell. So it is believed that this mitochondria was a foreign organism that was devoured by the cell. And again, that is called the endosymbiotic uh, hypothesis. So you can call that endosymbiotic hypothesis. Hypo. Okay. Also, um, because it makes so much energy, if you're into bodybuilding or powerlifting or whatever, you should know that the muscles within your body have trillions and trillions of mitochondria. Okay, so whenever you do a repetition at the gym, your muscles are making ATP. Right? So, um, like, for one little cell within the muscle, there's about 100 mitochondria. And whenever you take creatine, you're allowing the mitochondria to create ATP at a faster rate, at a faster and efficient rate. Okay? So the muscles have like 100 mitochondria per cell, and those mitochondria provide energy to the muscle whenever you are lifting something heavy. Okay? So essentially that is the end of lecture one. So now you know the uh, anatomy of a cell and you shouldn't be com confused whenever you have an exam saying, oh, what, what does the Golgi complex do? What does the mitochondria do? You know, cause now you know it. And hopefully this lecture helps you out. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with me. And I hope that you have a great semester and a great uh, day. All right, thank you so much. And remember that I love you. All right, have a great day.